this difficult time, our government wisely guards the health of our young and the health of their mothers with a higher ration of eggs. But of course, that does leave us others short at an egg each a week at the most. That's why so many are considering keeping hens to help. Now here are some handy hints and tips for new poultry keepers. So where should we start? I know, we'll start with the chicken or the egg or the chicken or the egg or the chicken or the egg. <laughs> now that's enough of that silliness. Let's get on. Before they come in to lay, we call hens pullets. And pullets can be bought at a variety of ages for a variety of prices. The lowest price we would advise you paying for a good commercial pullet at various ages is for a day old chick one shilling and sixpence, for a four week old three shillings, at eight weeks six shillings and three months just before laying ten shillings. Chicks can be bought cheaper than this in markets but cheap chicks are not worth the risk and it is better if in doubt to pay a good deal more. A normal pullet in her first 12 months is expected to lay around 150 eggs but a very well kept hen it is not unknown for to lay 200 eggs a year. A well fed hen is a good laying hen. Pre-war a layer's rations consisted of two ounces of corn and two and a half ounces of layer's mash a day. Thus six pullets needed nearly 12 pounds of food a week. Under war conditions however poultry keepers can only draw balance a meal and no corn at all. Many people do not get eggs because they stretch too far the very limited amount of protein in balance a meal by feeding far more birds than the two ounces of meal that is allowed per bird daily. This two ounces of balance a meal is obtained by calling at announced periods at the local food office and applying on form P7 for a ration card. With every shell egg registration surrendered to the local food office, this card will entitle the applicant to four pounds of balance a meal. The shell egg registrations of any number of family, friends or neighbours can be surrendered up to a maximum of 25 to increase the units of balance a meal allowed. Unfortunately, two ounces of balance a meal per day is not sufficient for a laying hen. Two ounces will fill one small teacup, but with it must be mixed about eight ounces or half a pint of minced kitchen scraps, potatoes, and vegetables. Without corn, many poultry keepers consider that their birds will no longer lay, but in actual fact it is the mash, and particularly the meat and fish meal in the mash, which produces eggs. But corn had undoubted advantages, especially as an exerciser for hens. Sunflowers and buckwheat are useful alternatives for those with the ground available. A helpful government leaflet gives full details of how to grow these. Although corn is not essential, some poultry keepers provide an imitation corn with large baked crumbs from stale bread. A word now must be said for the acorn. A hen will not be attracted by a whole acorn and a prejudice exists against feeding it because of the risk of olive coloured or black yolks 
as has undoubtedly occurred with ducks. But there's little evidence in support of this with poultry. And in any case, the poultry keeper who's consuming all his own eggs will obviously be prepared to run this risk if he can obtain such a cheap and valuable food. If the acorns are roughly broken or crushed, the hens will readily eat them, whether fed green or much weathered. They'll pick out the kernel, leaving the shell, which may cause the discolour jokes, and they can be given a good handful per bird daily. Similarly, the beech mast, introduced gradually, makes an excellent feed, especially if shelled, as the kernels of the beech nut are very rich in protein. But little is known about horse chestnuts, although they are considered too bitter and binding for pigs. But I can see no harm in feeding them in small quantities if they're soaked, skinned and boiled. Of course, the cheapest and most easily obtainable supplement for bulking out balance a meal is the potato, either whole or as peel. A bird will easily eat four to five ounces of cooked potatoes a day and it can form over 50% of the mash. However, late in the season, do make sure you rub any sprouts off the potatoes and of course, no green potatoes should be included. They're as bad for them as they are for us. The second best homemade provided food is dried grass mowings. These mowings should not be more than three inches long and should be dried quickly to preserve their green colour by spreading them out on a concrete floor or over netting raised off the ground. In hot sun, if turned over two or three times daily, it will dry in two days and can be stored packed, likely in sacks. Now any stale bread not fit for human consumption can just be soaked and included in the mash as it is. If the time can be spared though, bake it like a rust in the oven and then explode it through a kitchen mincer. It will make a floury meal of several grades and can be stored in a tin and used to dry off any sloppy meal. If you have any surplus, vegetables are an excellent addition to your hen's diet. It is preferable to mince raw vegetables rather than cook them, or at least to mince them before cooking. But this entails some time and trouble, and of course there is a shortage of good mincers. All cabbage leaves, potato peel, meat scraps, anything that can be cooked up, can be boiled or steamed in a pot, simmered in an oven, chopped up and the balance a meal ration mixed in to form a crumbly meal. The old fashioned hay box is an excellent way of cooking up any scraps. box however will not soften bones and any fish waste is a valuable addition of protein to your hen's diet. Bring the fish waste to the boil just covered by water, simmer for 10 minutes, cool and the bones will be soft. Put it through a kitchen mincer there's no harm in small quantities of dropped fruit and fruit peel of apples and plums being fed to your hens. Although carrot tops and pea pods are fibrous and difficult to use, they will be eaten if you chop them up finely. Do look at this list of the foods that the poultry keeper can grow himself for his birds. 
The only food materials which should never be given to hens are rhubarb and tea leaves and certain wild seeds and of course those poisonous shrubs such as yew and laburnum. Any table scraps or leftover can be added to the balancer meal as well. Where and how to keep your hens is a question many ask. The indoor laying battery is the most popular as the birds can be attended to in carpet slippers and the sparrows can be kept out. Don't hesitate to register with your local produce guild. Regular meetings will give demonstrations and lots more advice on keeping poultry. And do look out for the WI Food Circus. This travelling exhibition will be in your village soon and there will be poultry experts on hand helping you to make sure you have happy laying hens.